Hi, Mike Gaben here with some more KSP math. At the start of the last episode in this series, I had this, well, rather dorky science station in orbit around Kerbin, and the mobile processing lab was happily converting data, scientific data into transmittable science for me. But once I got into the night side, I quickly realized that I did not have enough electrical storage to make it, and I quickly ran out of electricity, and this thing had to shut down. That motivated me to develop this formula, which will calculate the amount of time you will be in the dark in any circular orbit around any body. Armed now with that information, what I would like to do is see if we can now decide what are the electrical storage and generation needs of this vehicle so that I no longer will have to worry about these night side power shortages. With that, let's do the math. So here we have our science station in the VAB and what we want to do is we want to add up all of its electricity usage. That's the first thing we're going to do. Now we're going to be a little bit careful. There are some things I have to think about and some things I don't because some things will be running over long periods of time and some things do not. So let's start off here at the top. This is one of the things I don't have to worry about as far as full time running. Up at the top here I have four Communitron 16s. It's completely unnecessary to have four of them this close to Kerbin. I could have easily just put one, but I put four of them just for aesthetics. I don't know. I thought it looked a little bit better and <laughs> slapped on four of them. But if we take a look in the communications tab and take a look at the Communitron 16, it at first looks like, oh my gosh, their electricity usage is huge. 20 units per second. And in fact, yes, that is huge but only while it's actually transmitting. When you're actually taking science, hitting that transmitting button, and it's going off. That uses a lot of electricity. But the thing is, we're in control of when that's going to happen. And the smart thing would just be simply not to do that when you're on the night side of a planet. Knowing, unless you have a whole lot of storage, if you're gonna transmit a lot of science, don't do it when you're in the dark. That's a very simple lesson to do. Wait for when you're in the light. There's no rush with this. So this 20 per second, since we can control when that's going to happen and when that's not going to happen. By the way, it's not just 20 per second. It's 80 per second because I got four of them. Um, we don't have to. We're going to kind of not worry about that as far as our nighttime use goes. Similarly, if we take a look at science on the back, uh, I got a bit of science going on here. We got the barometer, got the thermometer. If we take a look at the science and take a look at the barometer and the thermometer, they're both exactly the same. Their electricity usage is 0.4 per minute. I want to emphasize that, not per second, per minute. So that turns into actually a pretty tiny amount per second. Also, that is only when you are actually running the experiment to collect the data. So, for the most part, we don't have to worry about that either because we are in control, it's such a small amount, we don't need to worry about that either. So let's start talking about some of the things we should be worrying about. Number one, I'm gonna save the biggest for last. Number one that we are gonna add on here are these lights. I have a total of 12 of these Illuminator Mark IIs. There's eight of them up here, and then I got four of them down here. And if we get into under utility, there are the Illuminator Mark IIs. They use up 0.2 per minute. Again, per minute. So it's not that bad. So if I take the 1.2 per minute, divide that by 60 um, to get it per second, and then multiply it by the 12 lights that I have, that turns into just 0.24 per second. Not insignificant though, and in fact, when I'm on the night side, that's especially when I'm gonna to wanna to have them on, so I do wanna include that. So 0.24 per second is just for running these lights. But what the big thing is going to be here is the mobile processing lab itself. Now what is, I think, kind of unfortunate is if we go into science, look for the mobile processing lab, and look down here, it doesn't talk about its electricity usage at all. Nowhere in here do I see words talking about electricity. I'm not sure why, I don't know if it maybe is just forgotten. But I'll put a link to the part in the KSP wiki. While it's processing data, so what that means is, is you've collected some science, you've turned that into data, and now you're taking that data and converting it, you got scientists aboard and they're converting it into uh, usable science, 
that requires electricity and it requires five units of electricity per second, not insignificant. So we're definitely gonna be adding that on as well. So if we add that on to our 0.24 per second, that gives us 5.24 units of electricity per second this thing is going to use. Now our formula from last episode is going to help. We're gonna pull out our formula. I'm gonna put this into a 120 kilometer orbit about Kerbin. That gives me an orbital radius of 720,000 meters. Remember that big R is the radius of the parent body, which for Kerbin is 600,000 meters, and mu is the standard gravitational parameter, which for Kerbin is 3.5316 times 10 to the 12. And after we put this into a calculator and push this through, this tells us that we're gonna be spending 641 seconds in the dark. And if we take that 641 seconds and multiply it by the 5.24, which is our rate of using up electric charge, we get 3,359 units of electric charge that we should expect to use up as we go through the night side of Kerbin. So now we have ourselves something we can work with. Okay, I need about 3,300 units of electricity, ideally actually a little bit more. So, first of all, this thing already has 350 units of electricity on board. Tucked way under here is one of these uh, little rechargeable battery banks. It has 200 units right there. And if we go down to the, the command capsules, don't forget, also have uh, electrical charge in them. There's 150 units. So if I add those together, that's 350 units. So actually, technically, I just need another 3,000. Um, and you can do this in different ways. We'll go to electricity here. Um, for instance, these guys here, these Z-1K rechargeable battery banks, they're a thousand each. So if I wanted to, maybe I could just take that off, for instance, put on three of them there, and go with that, whoops, and that'll do it. Now, to be honest, this is cutting my margins pretty thin. I'm assuming that I'm going in with a full charge, I haven't messed up anything. Also, the formula has to be taken as kind of an approximation. So this is probably cutting things a little bit more thin. What you could do is you could take, well, I'll just take some of these Z100s. They're just, they're 100 units each. Maybe put on like six of those. And that looks, you know, I could do something like that. Or aesthetically, if you want to go right over top, because batteries really aren't that expensive. Uh, I have the Z-4K, which is 4,000 units of electricity. If I simply went down here, I could simply tick that in there. And that is now more than enough electrical storage for it. And it doesn't look too bad. What you'll do is an aesthetic choice on you, as well as if you're playing a career mode or a science mode, you may not have like the, Z, the uh, 4K unlocked yet. You might not be able to do that big one. So you decide what you do, but at least now we know what it is that we need. And you might think, okay, this thing is perfect. Oh, oh, oh not quite yet. We also have to think about electrical generation because that 5.24 units of charge that we're using up in the night, we continue to use that up in the day. And if we take a look at my, well, just these uh, uh, SP-L 1x6 solar panels, if we look at those, I only have two of them on here. And if we look at them, it is this one here, they only generate 1.6 units per second. So together that's 3.2. That's not even enough to satisfy the electrical demands on this vessel, period let alone charge up, have any left over to charge up the batteries. So we're gonna need to work out how much electrical generation we're going to need as well. What we have here is flat out inadequate. The way we're gonna do that is by calculating how much time to expect in the day. And you're like, oh no, not another formula for calc. Oh no, we, 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 we have this. We have all the formulas that we need. We already know how much time we're spending in the dark. We also have this orbital period formula, which will calculate how many seconds to do a complete orbit. It, all we have to do is subtract those two numbers. So using the orbital period formula, I can see that our orbital period is going to be 2,043 seconds. We subtract off the 641 seconds we should expect to spend in the night. That leaves us with 1,402 seconds we should expect to see in the day. Now, how much electrical generation do we need? Well, number one, we need to have at least 
5.24 just to supply the electrical demands of our lights in our mobile processing lab. But on top of that, we need some extra in order to charge up our batteries. To figure out how much extra we need, what we do is we take our nighttime drain, which is 3,359 electrical units, and then we need to divide that by the amount of time we can expect to be in the light. If you do that, you'll find that you need about another 2.4 units of electricity per second in order to charge up the batteries from what you used up over the night. So you take that 2.4, add that to the 5.24 to get 7.64, approximately. So we need about 7.64 units of electrical charge. Now you might be going, okay, well this guy is 1.6 units. Why don't I just take that uh, number of 7.64 divided by 1.6 and I get, well, four point something. So about five, five of these solar panels I need. So, you know, I'll just use six symmetry. Oh, I happen to be on six symmetry already. There we go. Problem solved. Well, maybe, I mean, this is a little bit sketchy because you not only have, this is how much it generates when it's in 100% sunlight. And to have all of these all in 100% sunlight, you have to point this end of it or the opposite end of it straight into the sun so all of these can be 100% exposed. And you have to be, so you're gonna have to be moving around and changing the attitude of this, uh, this station all the time. That's gonna be a pain. So this is probably not the best solution. So let's go look for something else. We'll throw, throw these away. I mean, what I could do actually, instead of six this way, if I pair them up, there's lots of solutions. If I pair them up, I could do this sort of thing. Two by two. I don't know, by two. I don't know if I... Ah, it doesn't look incredibly terrible. I could do that. This will work, right? There's six of them now. And it's actually possible if you orient this into the... Um, with uh, the solar panels perpendicular to the plane of your orbit, you can actually have these things be 100% exposed without having to adjust your vehicle. We'll do that, I'll show you that in orbit. Once we have this thing in orbit, I'll show you what I mean by that. So this will work. It is cutting again our margins kind of slim, but not too bad. Um, what other solar, you could also have these guys. These guys are 2.8 per second, but the problem is they're surface mounted. If you use these, you need well, you only need really three of them, but I mean, you could kind of do this, I suppose. Three of them like there and then another one there, but then you're into making sure this is always pointed towards the sun. That's the whole reason why we avoided that first solution. We could pull out the big guns. The big guns here is the Gigantor extra large one. Oh, I just realized I had that on two-way symmetry. Now the Gigantor is two point or 24.4 per second. So that will have us covered easy just by itself. So in fact, you only need really one of these. Except that I am forgetting one last thing. Remember these communitrons up here. They use up, if we go to communitrons, there we are. 20 units per second when we want to transmit. And remember how the mobile processing lab works. You put in a bunch of scientific data that you've collected and then you kind of leave it alone, let it process stuff until it has a bunch of science that it's had. It can hold up to about five, not about, exactly 500 units of science and then you can transmit that science away. So you will tend to transmit it in pretty big clumps. It might be nice to actually be able to transmit without worrying about electricity. If we bring this down to just a single communitron, that would probably be a smarter idea, then while that's transmitting, that uses 20. The Gigantor uses 24. So a single Gigantor will cover the transmission of this single communitron without getting into battery storage at all. By the way, if you happen to run out of electricity while you're transmitting, it's by no stretch of the imagination a disaster. All you have to, it'll stop transmitting automatically. You just gotta wait for the batteries to recharge and then just transmit again and repeat until it's all done. But if we wanna worry about that, what we can do is take just two of these communitrons, lose all these guys, 
communitrons. Take two of these gigantor. So one of these is responsible for recharging this entire station, while the other one simply takes care of if I'm going to do any transmitting. And this should cover it. I now have a vehicle with enough electrical storage and enough uh, solar generation in order to do this. Why don't we, uh, well, F12 this thing into orbit. All right, so here we are in orbit. Let's talk a little bit about orienting these solar panels right now. I'm gonna click on them so we can see both their exposure. Oh, they're both at 100%. Are we like pointed straight at the sun? We are, <laughs> okay. But of course, as soon as we start orbiting, right, around Kerbin, we won't keep, well, actually we will keep pointing at the sun at least for a little while. Let's, but that's not the way we're gonna keep. Oh, and let's turn on our lights for everything. There we go. Okay, so what I want you to do, let's take a look at the nav ball and imagine the circle that is going through, here's our retrograde vector, through the this radially out vector, whoops, time warping, through this radial out vector, around the prograde vector, and all the way around. So because we're in an equatorial orbit, this would be the east and west circle around the nav ball. You can position your vehicle anywhere along there Oop, let's put on SAS let's say right here this is just where it turned out now right now let's see what are our exposures at oh they're not actually not so bad 0.95 each let's actually turn it so they're a little worse that makes them better I don't want them to be better I actually turned my back end to the Sun let's turn them I don't want to put them on any particular vector because I want to demonstrate all you have to do is be on this circle somewhere there we go, that's pretty good. So that's really crappy exposure. One of them is occluded completely, the other one's at 13% exposure. But if I just take this vehicle and rotate it so that the direction these solar panels are pointing is perpendicular to the plane of our orbit, and since we are in an equatorial orbit, that would just be north-south, look at now, both of our solar panels are at 100% exposure and if I do some time warping they stay at 100% exposure even as we go around the planet and our orientation towards Kerbin continues to change so that's how you can orient your vehicle so that your solar panels are getting maximum exposure without you having to worry about tweaking your vehicle all the time all right let's let's generate us some science so if I take my my materials bay and open that up there we go, we'll create some uh, data for it. We will open, uh, we got a goo. Make some more data. We have gravity scan. Oh, I thought that was a barometer. It's a gravity scan. <laughs> we have a town thermometer. We can do a crew report. Oh, that's because nobody's in there. <laughs> Actually, can this do the crew report? Nope. Okay, we'll do a crew report. Make some more that way. We'll take uh, Bob here. We'll do an EVA. EVA report. Oh. I obviously have already done this EVA report at some time in the past. All right, that's good enough. But we have some data now in our um, mobile processing lab not a lot just five and what we're going to do is we're going to start our experiments so number one is i should be seeing absolutely nothing going down in my electric charge so good we are satisfying the electrical needs when we go into the dark of course we're going to start losing electricity but we should be finding now that we have enough storage that we shouldn't get down to zero as long as you don't do something foolish like transmitting and here we are coming back into the sunlight charging back up right back up the full charge no problem at all of course we've kind of gone overboard with the electrical generation and because remember I should be able to transmit science and not use the batteries at all I should have enough generation even for that uh, but unfortunately at this point of the game I don't have enough science to transmit and I think spending time going round and round and round to generate that science really isn't a good use of this video. I think the points of this video have been hit. So I'm going to thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.